Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So just a quick update on my solar charger that I installed back in November from a company called SRNE. It's a 40 amp MPPT solar controller. Now I wanted interested in testing this because it's a relatively inexpensive one compared to some of the others on the market. So I wanted to see if they uh, would work for me. Um, previously I installed a smaller model of theirs and then they sent out this one for me to test. So what I've done is I've I've combined them with my system and so now I'm running two of them. <clears throat> so for the last five months we've been basically boondocking down in, in the southwest so I got a pretty good handle on on how they performed and overall they've performed great no problems at all um, don't even really have to think about them got them all set up and they just bring in power for us I'll link back to this video where I went through all the features and the installation and a quick demo. This is sort of a, an update for you. Uh, there's a few things I really like about this controller, basically three main things. Number one, it can accept over paneling, which means it has a, uh, it lists for a 12 volt uh, setup, uh, 540 watts is the max. But if you put more panels on it, what it does is it'll accept that extra uh, input. It won't hurt the controller. It will just uh, drop off any excess and, and max out at 40 amps of charging power to your battery. So you can't really hurt it by over paneling. And I have tested that. That comes in handy because a lot of times you want to over panel the controller in some situations where you have low sun angle or you've got clouds going on. It's a kind of a hazy day. Uh, a lot of times you can get the max amperage um, that way. But then if, say, the sun comes out suddenly and, it, and you get too much wattage going into it, this controller can handle that. Also, it has an advanced temperature protection, which is sort of along the lines of the same thing. Although, uh, if it's really hot out, uh, if this temperature, if the controller starts to get too hot, it will automatically reduce its charging current so that it doesn't overheat itself and destroy the controller so it's kind of pretty advanced that way it doesn't totally shut off it just reduces your amperage say you're getting 40 amps and it gets super hot it'll back off gracefully down to say 20 or 30 amps and i did test that one summer day when it was 104 fahrenheit out and i over paneled it and drove the temperature up and i, I could watch it actually in action as it went into a protection mode and the third is it supports uh, lithium batteries. So what I've done is I've just been using its uh, preset lithium um, for my line energy. Uh, lithium batteries <clears throat> been no problem at all. I can why it charges them fine and uh, doesn't overcharge them or anything. So it's worked out well. It does also have a user mode that you can go into. Next, I'll just show you how I have it set up. So I have two separate roof arrays on my rig. I've got a 540 watt one towards the rear and a 400 watt one towards the front. So I have them going through those two controllers and into my lithium batteries. Just give you a look at it <clears throat> in real life here. So this is four 100 watt panels on the front. That's going to one of the controllers and then back here is 540 watts they're all wired in parallel um, main reason i wanted to set it up like this is i do a lot of camping in trees in the pacific northwest sometimes i may have just the nose poking out into the sun or i may only have part of them you know in the sun so i didn't want things to get have shading problems um, also you can see my rig is kind of curved on the roof so you know when the sun's shooting this way it may be great on these panels but these panels be actually tilted away from the sun so if they were all kind of wired in series the back panels could affect the front panels and stuff like that so I just find this is the best arrangement for me also it leaves me lots of room on the roof there uh, I also on this front I can go and hook up ground panels or I have a panel on the back of my truck so on the hitch here I have a plug where I can plug in extra panels if I desire and I found that really handy uh, in the really mid-winter when the sun angle was very low 
and the harvest was pretty short, I'd take some of these ground panels and I'd lay them out and point them right at the sun and combine them with these so that I could get a, a really good amount of amps into the, the batteries with all that. Anyway, let's just give you a quick demo of, of it in action. So uh, here's a, a clip of uh, me actually just the other day charging up the, the battery. So I'll let you see the controllers in action. So here's the setup working away in real life. It's uh, just after noon, early April. Sun's pretty high. Uh, so you can see both controllers are putting in over 20 something amps. This is the one that's uh, doing my back panels. You can see 23 amps. And so that's 540 watts going into it, but it's, it's kind of a, not at a great angle to the sun. This is a 21, just a little over 21 amps and that's 400 watts in the front of the rig. So between the two of them, I'm putting in around, you know, 43 amps. And the voltage, I think is around 18 or 17 volts, pretty close to 18 volts. Like I say, this has been totally trouble free, 26 Celsius right now, so not really heating up too bad. It's kind of nice to have the split system doesn't work each controller too hard. But this bottom controller, the way I have it wired here, out here is the, the wires coming from up on the roof. But I've also added a couple more wires and that goes through this heavy cable. And it goes out front of my fifth wheel hitch. And that enables me to add some ground panels if I want. So sometimes I'll utilize this controller and add some ground panels and actually pretty well max it out. Let's give you a demo right now with a with a ground panel I have set up. There we go. So I just have this folding solar panel I've been carrying around. It's actually a 400 watt panel, but it's a, a 50 volt panel. So of course, when I hook it up in parallel, it's going to draw the voltage down. But I still should get, you know, a couple hundred watts out of it. <clears throat> so I set it up on the ground and then I hook it into a cable I have for my ground panels, which is just an old 30 amp power cord that I had cut and I can connect it together here and it goes up and down into my bay here. So now you can see out of that panel, I've added another 10 amps. So now this one's doing 33 amps, that one's doing 22, so I'm up to about 55 amps of charging at around 18 volts, so not too bad at all. So I've had this thing months now and it's just been flawless, so for an inexpensive controller it uh, performs pretty well. Okay, well there you go. So far so good for an inexpensive controller. Um, I'll keep using it and uh, let you know if it, it fails or anything goes wrong. One thing about this controller, this SRNE, uh, company. I noticed they don't really sell themselves. They seem to uh, sell through other suppliers. I find other brands will, will buy this controller and they'll put their brand name on them. So you'll find this actual particular controller being sold by all sorts of different companies out there. Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, everyone.